guys, it's me, Sasuke Marie 3, and I am here today to do a bit of a different kind of video. So, a long time ago, I made a video called How to Keep Your Webkin Signatures in Good Condition, and for some reason, that still gets views, but my methods of actually cleaning my webkins, especially my signatures, has changed vastly since I filmed that video. I've learned a lot more. It's been years since then, so I thought today we'd go a little bit on a different route. Instead of just keeping your signatures in good shape, we're gonna see what we can do about a signature that's not in good shape. So if you saw my previous video, you know that I got Jin here. I just bought him. He's been very used, very well loved. He has even a matted tail from dryer fur. His tush tag has some yellow staining even. He is in pretty rough shape, especially when you compare him to my other signature Arctic Fox, Shia. Shia was brought brand new and I have done the best I can to keep her in good shape. And I would say she is still pretty good. Her fur's not as good as she was when she was brand new, but especially compared to Jin, there is a vast difference. So we're gonna see how closely we can restore Jin to look like Shia. Now, it's not gonna be 100%. There's no way we're gonna get all this perfect glossy fur back, and I doubt we're going to get the fluffy tail, but we are going to see all that we can do to restore Jin. But before we do all that, we want to get some before pictures, so that way we can see how far we've come once we're all done. So Jin, it's time for your first photo shoot. cute and it actually got him a little more dirty. But now comes the actual first step that I always go when it comes to cleaning my webkins and that is the washing machine. Now I know lots of people don't want to put their webkins in the washing machine but the reality of it is the washing machine is going to clean them better than you can with your hands in the sink and it actually is better for them in the long run. Because if you notice, Jin, he already has been washed in a washing machine. We could tell that because of his tail. But possibly for that, he was washing a sink. Because if you notice, the little black around his eyes is very faded. He doesn't have hardly any. Neither around his nose, the inside of his ears. You can see where the coloring has been washed out. That happens from a hand wash where it's soaking and it just rinses out like that. It doesn't happen in the washing machine from what I have found. So it is much better to wash them in a washing machine. However, you don't want to just drop them in. You want to put them in a delicate bag. Now I've seen some people say you can use a pillowcase and just stick them in the pillowcase. You know what? Delicate bags are a couple of bucks. They're stupidly cheap and they have a zipper because let me tell you, I've had cases where I've washed webkins before and the delicate bags have actually broken open and that has washed the coloring off. So really, just spend the extra few bucks, get yourself a delicate bag and wash your webkins in that. My mom seems to think it would be okay if you wash these guys with a load of laundry. I don't like to do that just in case the rare occasion that a color would bleed. So, because it's just him putting on a small load size, always wash in cold water. I mean, we do anyways because it's cheaper. And then we are going to set this to the delicate cycle, which for me, that's casuals. We're going to put it on the lightest setting. Of course, put a splash of detergent in. And this is going to sound weird, but I'm going to put some white vinegar into the fabric softener. The reason is vinegar is a natural whitener. It is not a bleach. It will not fade away other colors like black. It will simply brighten them up and not to mention it is a great disinfectant. I am not going to lie to you though, they will smell a little bit like vinegar for a while. But anyways, we're going to just close the lid and let this cycle finish. It shouldn't take too long because it's on such a light setting. Now it is finished and I can smell the vinegar. And that got rid of a lot of the excess oils on him. And actually, I think he looks a little bit brighter. I can't make a call on the softness of his fur because it's still wet and still a little vinegary. Right now, we need to dry him off. I don't know who needs to hear this, but never ever put a Webkinz in the dryer. That's how his tail ended up like this, I reckon. Now the washing machine actually gets him pretty dry. You can see he's not dripping wet or anything. He's he's damp still. I like to set them in front of a fan to dry just so they have the constant air. So that's nice. It won't take forever. I guess you can do it over a vent if you want. Just it seems to take an awful long time and I think it's better if you use a fan. But me being me, I don't like to use a traditional box fan. You know what's a giant fan that's going to be running anyways? The air conditioner. <laughs> Basically every time I wash a webkins and need to dry them, I just set them on top of here and then come get them in an hour or flip them. The bad thing is some things can happen if you forget them out here. I have actually forgotten webkins out here overnight before and uh, I've forgotten them out here and then it starts raining 
And then it's an oh no moment. I do want to make a note with smaller webkins, be careful because this fan is really powerful and it typically will blow them off. When I was little, Nadi used to take kids clips in the pool with me and to put them on here to dry. Um, I literally would take the clips and clip them onto the metal here because <laughs> otherwise they just go flying off. You get to see, you got to see Ken's clips flying. It was great. Box fans can be useful for smaller webkins, but for something like a signature or a full-sized regular, it'll be fine. See you in an hour, Jin. Oh, his tail is flying. But now I'm going to do the Jin rotation. Look, look, just like he doesn't fall very fast. It's just so cool to use this thing. Okay, and I'm gonna keep periodically turning him and letting him dry. He nearly fell off. Okay, well, I've moved him around a couple of times and he is dry. His fur isn't super soft. Typically, I find that a couple of days after getting them washed, they really soften up. But if you look at his tush tag, it no longer even has the yellow mark on it. It looks nice and clean. I also haven't signed his name on it yet because the washing machine would have washed the ink of the pen off. So I might put him through for a second round, but you can see the coloring marks around his eyes are still exactly as vibrant as they were before and they did not wash away. And this is why I prefer the washing machine with a delicate bag over the sink method. So I did decide to wash Jin a second time. Something else I forgot to mention the first time that I did this was that vinegar aside from being a natural whitener, it's also a fabric softener. I did not know that until my mom told me, but that is some interesting information. Vinegar just seems so, so unbelievably nice, you know? I'm gonna let them dry again before I can do anything else with them. And I also wanna note, I would not put a Webkinz that really does not need a wash into the washing machine. Really, unless your Webkinz is in rough shape and really needs the cleaning, don't wash them. I've seen some people who have webkins that still look great, they look almost like new, and they just wash them. Don't do that. Especially with signatures. For webkins that have like the stringy fur, the old fashioned webkins like the pink and white dog, cocker spaniel, those handle it a lot better, but ones that have shiny and silky fur, kind of like these signatures, that's not a good idea. So basically, unless you got the webkins off eBay and they're full of grease and they have all these stains or something, you don't need to wash them really. At that point, washing them could do more harm than good. So I'm gonna let them dry for a few hours again, and then I am going to see what I can do about his fur. So Jin has now been through two washes and has ample drying time. Now, the next part that we can do is a little more of restoration. Unfortunately, I really don't think we're gonna be able to do anything about this tail, and that's because it has very clearly been melted in the dryer. So if you look at a Webkinz tag, Webkinz are made from polyester. Polyester is plastic. Polyester faux fur cannot go in the dryer because the heat will melt the fibers, and that causes the matted effect. After it's been melted, there's not really a whole lot that can be done. This is why it's so important to never put your Webkinz in the dryer. But some grooming is not all that we can do for Jin at this point. So I talked to somebody else that does with their Webkinz. I'm not going to do it because I don't have the confidence that I could do it right. Since Jin has been hand washed before, you can see because he has all the coloring washed off, you can technically replace that by drawing it on with a fabric marker. Not a Sharpie, a fabric marker. I talked to someone that did this with some of their Webkins and honestly, the results looked great. They said, you know, they just took a fabric marker and used a lot of blending and the result was beautiful. If you wanna do that, that's completely up to you. I highly recommend if you do decide to redo some of the darker outlines on your Webkins to practice either get yourself some polyester faux fur from the fabric store or go to Goodwill and buy a cheap stuffed animal or something. Just do some practice before actually working on your webkins. Also, I did a little looking into it because I was considering doing it for Jen, but make sure the fabric marker that you buy does not need to be ironed on to set. Virtually every fabric marker that I found said in order to set it, you had to use an iron, which obviously that's not an option with the Webkins because I just discussed the problem with heat. So just be aware of what you're doing, practice, and hopefully you end up liking the results. Now, in my video a long time ago, I really loved using this brush because I said it made them really soft. To be honest, I've kind of stopped liking using it 
because of the fact it kind of left their fur a little staticky. His fur is never going to have that type of shine again. But if I use this, you can see it's not really that it's brushed it or that it's even matted or anything. It's just, it's made a little staticky. But for right now, I'm just going to try and separate a little bit of the polyacrylic fibers to give his fluff a little more of the fluff look instead of just a bunch of hairs. <laughs> While doing this, there's also more problems that you can have with your webkins. Most commonly is that they have a rip or a hole in them. The most common place for webkins, not signatures, the most common place for them to get a hole is actually right along their gut because they have a seam there for where they've been stuffed and it just very often comes loose. Those are quite easy to fix. Just get yourself a little sewing kit and sew it up. There's lots of sewing tutorials on YouTube that you can follow. And even then, sewing is very simple. You just thread the needle, tie a knot, and then weave in and out. It's quite simple to sew. And there are all sorts of ways to deal with different stains. Every type of stain will need a different way you can go through it. So the best thing I can say is if you have a certain stain, Google it and then see what Google says to remove it. I've heard of some people that were cuddling their webkins and had a nosebleed and got blood on their webkins. Me, my most common issue has been I was filming outside with them and they sat on a sappy leaf. There's all sorts of things that can be done and need to be done for different stains. So just see what you need to do. Now Jin has actually lost a little bit of fur. You can see his fur is a little thin here around his cheeks. Some of that is tucked away. It just got tucked in the seam when he was being sewn at the factory. But for things like over here where it's gotten thin because a few pieces have fallen out, there's not really much you can do about that. Unfortunately, that's about the extent of my knowledge. Some things, they're just damaged and you cannot repair them. Wow, he actually looks pretty good. His fur even has a little bit of that shine. It's not perfect, but I don't think it's half bad. Now, fluff him up. And you can see his fur actually isn't sticking together in the big clumps like it was before. It looks quite different. He is almost unrecognizable at this point, actually. I'm surprised that we've made this much progress with him. I was not expecting him to look this good. Okay. Now to the tail. I don't think there's gonna be much, if anything, I can do about this because this has been melted together, but I'm going to just see what I can do without losing a bunch of fur. I'm not going to stick my comb in and really pull. I don't want to pull out the fur. I'm just gonna kinda try and do it lightly over the surface to get some basic mats out. There is another thing you can do if there is a really, really matted tail with something like a Singsher Arctic Fox here. I'm not going to do this, but technically what you can do is find some polyester faux fur and just sew them a new tail. That sounds really cruel. It sounds like it'd be hard to do and not something that I want to do, especially because faux fur fabric is not very cheap. But if you want to have a full fluffy tail again after getting a webkins like this, that's probably your best bet. I want to make a little suggestion here in post that I didn't think of during the video. It's very common to get a signature, especially a rare one that has either had like its nose chewed off by a dog, its ear torn off, or a matted tail like Jin. And rather than going out and buying the fabric and trying to create those from scratch, one thing you could do technically is buy a lookalike and take the pieces you need from that lookalike for the webkins. For instance, I could buy a signature Arctic Fox lookalike at Target for about $25 take the tail off that and replace Jin's tail with lookalikes. Of course, this is only an option for certain signatures, but it's still an option nonetheless if you really, really want to get them all fixed up nice and neat. Now I'm gonna go the opposite direction, see if I can pull the fur back, because if it can go back and forth, it will give a little more of a furry look. So I noticed while doing Jin's tail that if we look closely here, you can see literally where some of the fur has been melted down to a blob. The tail looks better but it's not perfect and you can definitely see it does not match the rest of his body. Now for a fluff up shake. Oh, there goes white fuzz. There we have Jin. And wow, he actually looks really, really good. Obviously he does still have problems such as the lack of coloring and the fact that his nose and eyes are a little bit scuffed up, but there's not really much that can be done about that. I am quite pleased with how Jin looks. So that ends my little bit of a journey of trying to restore Jin. Really, all I did was clean him, but I did mention other things you technically can do to help restore some webkins. But overall, he's fluffy, he's soft, he looks much better than when I bought him. Still, when you compare him to Shia, 
there's no competition over which one looks better. Shia's fur might look a little more yellow, but it has a lot more luster and a lot more fluff to it than Jin's. Of course, that's a result of him being thrown in the dryer before, but overall, I am rather satisfied with the process. I did not think he'd come out as good as he looks. So now that he's all cleaned up, I think he can finally wear his little choker. There you go, Jin. You've definitely earned it. So why is a video like this so important? Seeing as Webkin's especially signatures are getting harder to find because they are older, it's really hard to find ones that are still in brand new condition or at least very lightly used. A large majority of them have been used, have been well loved, and are just getting resold because the person lost interest and therefore they're mostly going to look like Jin and not like Shia. And with the increasing cost of signatures somehow still going up and up and up and up and up, I don't know why even some of the unpopular ones are like going through the roof, but it might just not be financially viable to get one that is in good shape if they're even available. So it's important to know how to properly care for as well as fix up the ones that have already been damaged. Like I said, Jin didn't come out perfect. There is still a big difference between him and Shia, but he still looks good. And I even think the seller, had they cleaned him up like this before selling him, probably could have gotten more money for him. So I think from both a seller and a buyer perspective, it is important to know how to properly clean these webkins and take care of them. But of course, that's just my opinion. And if you have any types of tips that you think might be helpful in possibly restoring a webkins that has not been mentioned in this video already, please leave a comment down below. Let's just try and make this a really nice and informative video so anyone that does get a webkins that's in poor shape can look at it and figure out how to hold hopefully best care for their webkins. But anyways, no little restoration would be complete without one final little photo shoot. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one later.